Hi guys, this is Josh Smith from the Astro Imaging Channel, and here is a, another mini tutorial. Uh, this mini tutorial is going to be combining RGB stars with narrowband data in Photoshop. I'll go through uh, two methods of doing this uh, very quickly. One method with uh, data that has been toe mapped in narrowband, and another method will be with uh, stars that are already in your narrowband image. Okay, so the data we're going to work with uh, for this mini tutorial will be uh, the M27 narrowband data that I captured, uh, and we'll also work with some RGB data that uh, Cloudy Nights member Mad Ratter shared with me. So thanks to him for sharing this um, RGB data. And so one of the more commonly asked questions when talking about narrowband imaging and tone mapping is how to put your color stars back into your image. Um, there's two ways that you can look at it. One is that you add your RGB stars into a tone mapped narrowband data image. And the other way that you would look at it is that you replace uh, your narrowband stars with RGB stars. So the highly recommended way that I would uh, tell most people to do this is to use a completely tone mapped image and then add your RGB stars back into it. Um, it's just a much cleaner way to do it. Uh, you're going to get uh, only the RGB stars in there. You don't have to worry about halos. You don't have to worry about kind of bright white spots in the middle of your uh, in the middle of your stars. And it just it's a much smoother way to add your uh, add your stars into your image. So <clears throat> what I like to do when I'm adding the RGB stars is completely process my tone mapped picture and then completely process. Uh, the RGB picture, and you can see that, you know, this, uh, maybe not quite completely processed, but probably 90% of the way there on this M27 from Mad Ratter. Um, so, you know, the stars are all already quite colorful, um, and they're ready to pop in. They're, they've been uh, reduced just a little bit, and any sharpening that I wanted in that field is already in that field. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take um, these two images that are already aligned, and uh, I'm going to copy uh, Mad Ratter's picture, and then I'm just going to paste it on top of my picture over here, and I'm going to use a screen mode for the blending option here. And right off the bat, you can see it's just about just about exactly what I want, but. Uh, there's two things that happen here. One is that the intensity of the entire image background kind of jumps up immediately, which in this case is fine with me because I had the black points pretty low on my narrow band image. But sometimes you want a little bit more contrast uh, to your image. And so if you want to put a little more contrast into your image, um, after putting the screen mode, I'll just paste in uh, this, this image once again, and I will go to a soft light mode. And you can see here the contrast is great, and the stars really pop out of the screen. The uh, color and the narrowband data is really crisp and sharp, but it's further than I wanted to go. I just wanted kind of a little bit of a soft light effect. So what I'm going to do is drag this opacity way down, probably about you know somewhere between 30 and 50, depending on uh, what you like to see. Um, so I want to make sure that I still have good contrast on the stars, which the soft light blending mode helps, but I also want to make sure that uh, all this nebulosity in here still you know, comes out nice and clean on top. And so if I turn it way up, that nebulosity tends to disappear. If I turn it all the way down on the opacity, then you know, obviously it's what, what it looks like in the layer before. So I'm going to put this right about at 30%, 33%, and it gives kind of a nice, <clears throat> nice mixture of the two. So the dust is still really... Uh, faint and kind of swimming on top of the image, but the uh, stars are also very colorful and crisp. So this is the preferred and recommended way for adding RGB stars for me in Photoshop. <clears throat> okay, so another quick method for doing this here, and I'll step through this briefly, is actually replacing narrowband stars with RGB stars. So in this case, uh, what you have <coughs> are white stars in the background. And you can get these white stars from narrowband data by going up to a filter, a noise filter, and then reduce noise. And what you want to do is turn the strength all the way up to 10 and reduce color noise uh, up to 100%. 
and you want to preserve details at zero percent. And I'm sorry, actually that strength should be all the way down at zero. And you can see how this works on this color image right here. If I go to <coughs> noise and reduce noise, and go to strength zero, reduce color noise to 100%, and hit OK, and you can see that the color in these stars will start to disappear. So if I go ahead and do that again by hitting Control F, the color will continue to disappear in these stars and it will turn white. So this is sort of the same exact effect that you want to go ahead and do if you are working on narrowband stars that sometimes get that magenta hue. So you can see here, this is uh, where I would basically have put in my narrowband uh, stars and reduce the, no the uh, color in them. So once you reduce the color in them, then you want to go through, create a new layer. So I have colorless stars. And then you want to go to Image, Adjustments, and Selective Color, and go to your whites. And when you go to your whites, you want to turn your black slider all the way up. And you might have to do this just a couple times. And we'll do this one more time here. Turn the black slider all the way up on whites. And you can see what it does is it kind of takes out the core of all of this uh, all these white stars and turns down the color on them. So once you do that, then you can take your color image, <clears throat> and I'm going to go back in history here, and take the color image with the stars here, copy that, and bring that back onto your original image, and <clears throat> all you want to do is lighten with that. So you go over to your lighten mode, and you can see color stars pop up right on top of those white stars. And so this is a good way to work with uh, putting RGB stars back onto narrowband stars. And you can see it does a good job even here on these little stars that are uh, hard to get color onto. So sometimes you'll see also that you'll blow out a little bit of the core because you're reducing the, uh, the, the color. And when you're, when you're adding your uh, layers that have your narrowband data on it, you might, you might ruin this area in here. So that happens. All we have to do is bring that original image back on as a layer on top. Feather this data back in. So feather that at about 50 pixels. And I will make a mask with that. And you can see it gives a very similar effect. Uh, so you have your RGB stars and you have your uh, original dumbbell here and everything's back in there. Um, I don't like this method as much as the first one that I showed, but it's another way that you can add RGB stars to narrowband data. Thanks for watching.